Station 11, Kentuckiana's number one news broadcast with Jim Mitchell and Kirsty Wilde, Dave Conrad with sports, and Chuck Taylor with the weather. Good evening. I'm Jim Mitchell reporting live from Bardstown High School. Jimmy Carter, with his presidency on the line, has tried to come back to the people with the first of what he said will be many town meetings around the country. He answered questions on energy, on salt, on our relations with our allies and with our adversaries around the world. He took tough questions from many people and sympathetic questions from others. If the president has had enough of the cynical Washington establishment and the skeptical Washington press corps, he must be feeling much more cheerful tonight because what he received along the streets of Bardstown today was an enthusiastic welcome from cheering people who lined the streets, others who waited outside in 90 degree, 90 percent humidity weather in order at least to get a glimpse of him. About 2,100 people were able to see him inside. But if the president expected the questions in this community to be a pushover, well, he was wrong there because they were tough. They asked him, why don't we do more to help Vietnam, especially the refugees? And he said he hopes to do more for Vietnam, but he's concerned about relations between that country and Cambodia, the constant fighting going on there. Why don't we reform welfare? After a big push for his energy program, that was the first question from a lady from Shepherdsville. He said his administration is making every effort to improve the welfare program, make sure that people who can work do, but that those who need help get it. Why don't we do more for our allies? Why didn't we keep the Panama Canal? He said he felt we made the right move in Panama and giving the canal to Panama for joint trusteeship with the United States until the year 2000 was the wise move. Of course, even the President of the United States had some technical difficulties in this well-orchestrated event, so when a microphone didn't work today, he just invited a young fellow up to use the presidential mic. Sean Contrell and I live right here in Bardstown and what would the circumstances have to be before you ration gas should Congress give you their permission to do so? Thank you. Good question. It will not be implemented. We'll put the rationing plant on the shelf as a standby but we'll be ready and if we do have a severe and sustained loss of gasoline then it will be put into effect. I hope that it will never have to be implemented. And if I do a good job as president, and if we get a good energy program to the Congress that I've described to you in my opening remarks, then we won't have to have gasoline rationing. My name. So that was one question from one young gentleman who wanted to know what exactly would it take to ration gasoline. Other questions touched on everything from will the Russians catch us in nuclear weaponry if we go ahead and sign the SALT II treaty? to what about telephone service in Bullitt County? And although the President of the United States might ordinarily not be concerned about phone service in part of Bullitt County, he promised that when he goes back to the White House tomorrow, he will pick up his telephone, call the chairman of the Public Service Commission in the state of Kentucky, and try to get something done. He said he couldn't guarantee that would happen, but he is going to make an effort. The President received, as we said, a tumultuous welcome in Bardstown today as he took a motorcade from the airport, and Bud Harbsmeyer was on 3rd Street in downtown Bardstown for the motorcade. The President has picked his Kentucky town meeting spot well. Bardstown is Carter country, and they responded well today by giving him a warm and a very friendly welcome. For over a block, he crossed and recrossed the street. Every face and sign along the parade route was friendly. Any enemies the president made by canceling out of his Bardstown trip three weeks ago were dispelled by this trip today. The Chamber of Commerce, for example, sold out of the 2,000 Carter buttons they were selling for a dollar apiece. And $5 t-shirts with Carter's picture on them were selling well, too. But that's not the surprising thing here, because Carter is popular in Nelson County. Nelson County is heavily Democratic, and three years ago gave Carter 65% of the votes cast for president. So it was a friendly crowd that cheered the president the four blocks along 3rd Street to Badal Street, and then to the town meeting at the hot and stuffy Bardstown High School gym. This is Bud Harbsmeyer reporting from Bardstown. Over and over again today, the theme of the president was energy. He talked about it to the folks at the Bardstown High School. He's mentioned it in questions and answers as well as in his prepared remarks. And it was, in fact, the theme of his trip. He began it, in fact, in Jefferson County. Before he came here, he was up in the Louisville area to tour the LG&E Cane Run Road power plant. And Kirstie Wilde was there. 
The president's helicopter, along with the choppers of the other VIPs and the press, are just now landing for their tour of the LG&E Cane Run Road power plant. They came on a sunny, very hot, fairly clear day with the pollution at only 69 in the moderate range, which is exactly the atmosphere LG&E needs to show off its plant with scrubbers. LG&E is still the biggest polluter in Louisville, and even at this model plant, three of the six scrubbers are not in compliance with federal regulations on dirt particles being sent up into the air. Action 11's Jeffrey Hutter is inside the plant along with the executives and the workers to greet the president. President Carter fulfilled his old image when he arrived for the tour. He was all smiles. On the inside, he looked ready for business with his suit coat off and shirt sleeves rolled up. We couldn't tell exactly what the business was. Reporters and photographers were kept far away from the president. LG&E President Robert Royer explained plant operations to Mr. Carter as he looked at the huge turbine generators, then later in one of the control rooms. He came to this plant because it is a coal burning power plant, fitting in with his emphasis on coal. While touring the plant, President Carter spent nearly all of his time talking with the president of LG&E and Kentucky politicians on the tour, avoiding the workers who keep the plant going around the clock. From what I could see, he talked to only one worker, and that was a very brief conversation. Uh, he talked about he could operate a nuclear plant, but he didn't know if he could operate a coal plant or not. And what'd you tell him? I told him it probably about the same. Did he ask you any questions about the operation in here? No, he didn't ask me. Did you have anything that, uh, that you told him or you wanted to tell him you didn't? No, I, I just had a little butterflies about it. <laughs> How did it make you feel overall? Well, made me feel good. Being, you know, close to a president, never had been that close to one before. And I was surprised at his size. I thought he was bigger than what he was. For anybody, a tour of the Cane Run Road power plant would be informational, but it's the kind of information a president could get in a Washington briefing. For Mr. Carter, a big plus in touring this plant today is merely being seen here to show on national news what he's been talking about for some time, a greater commitment to coal as a national energy source. Kirstie? It was also an opportunity for the president to spread his message that in states like Kentucky, there is plenty of fuel to help make us energy independent of the OPEC oil cartel. It's absolute folly for the United States to ship billions of dollars overseas each year to bring tankers of foreign oil to our shores while beneath our feet in your great state of Kentucky and others lie more than 300 years of coal reserves just waiting to be mined and waiting to be used. The president also promised that he will not give up on clean air. He did not say, however, that this plant alone sends 3,000 tons of ash and dirt into the air every year and 250,000 tons of sulfur dioxide, even with the scrubbers. I will not permit America to be forced to choose between breathing foul air and having our waters filthy on the one hand or mortgaging our future to the OPEC oil cartel. We don't need to do either one. This plant, burning high sulfur coal cleanly and safely, proves that our country can chart a different course for the future. And last, the president asked for the workers' help in pressuring Congress to pass his energy programs. Thank you very much. The president seemed to have the workers here on his side as he asked for their help to get his energy programs through Congress. He also wants their help in producing the coal that he needs to get more plants like this built and into operation. I'm Kirsty Wild reporting from the Cane Run Road power plant. We'll have more from Action 11 right after this. Action 11 is brought to you by First National Bank. First National Checking gives you more so you can get more out of life. A lot of checks cross my counter. And if there's one you see more than the rest, it's First National. Maybe I'm more aware of theirs because that's where I bank. But most likely it's because a lot of people like me feel they get more with First National. With my checking account, I've got Teller 24, a personal banking card, and I've even got a way to pay my bills over the phone. So if First National thinks their checking is the best, I agree with them because it gives me more. First National Checking. It gives you more so you can get more out of life. It's time to join our celebration, Kentucky style. To all you folks from all around, come on and stay a while. It's our great state fair, and we hope to see you there to join our celebration. It's time to join our celebration, Kentucky style. The feeling's great, let's celebrate. We love to see you smile. The 
affair isn't far from wherever you are. About 1,400 foundry workers at International Harvester are continuing their wildcat strike tonight. The workers left their jobs yesterday in protest of the firings of three workers last week accused of sabotage. They're members of UAW Local 817, and this evening both the company and the union are holding their ground. At the present time, obviously we have less than uh, 100 people in the plant, in the foundry working. So 90, 95 percent of the 1,100 workers are out here. I would say 95 percent of the people out. How long are you going to stay out? As long as it takes. Company officials have had no comment other than to say that this strike is illegal. Jefferson County's elementary students have something to be proud of tonight. They scored higher than the national average on their achievement tests. And Chuck Olmstead is here now to tell us more. Kirsty, this past year, youngsters in the third and fifth grades took standardized achievement tests and they wound up scoring higher than both the national and state averages. A good 5% better than the national average in basic skills like reading, spelling and math and about 10% higher than other school systems right here in the state. And school officials say that's proof that the elementary school program is strong and getting better. I think that the basic curriculum that the students are now in is a very sound developmental curriculum and I think the achievement scores that you see shows that a large percentage of the child, children have achieved, you know, as compared to the state and the nation. Now the kids in the middle and high schools, well, they didn't do quite as well. In fact, the 7th and 10th graders who also had to take the test scored only about the same as the state and national average. So, Kirstie, I guess school officials would be making the big push in the higher grades to boost up those scores in the coming year. Okay, thank you, Chuck. It's clear tonight that the school board and the teachers association will not be able to meet their self-imposed deadline of today to come up with a new contract. They met all day today and the issues left to decide are basically money issues. Negotiators wouldn't set a new deadline. All they would say is that they're somewhere between the 6% money figure the board is offering and the 14% the teachers are demanding. President Carter has declared 10 Indiana counties a disaster area, making them eligible for federal relief funds. Four straight days of rain swelled rivers and creeks, causing flash floods in many communities, including the hard-hit communities of English and Marengo. In four counties, individuals will be able to apply for federal assistance. In six, local governments will get federal help to repair sewers, roads, and bridges. Assistance centers will be open in just a few days. There are new questions tonight about the strength of concrete used in safety areas at the Marble Hill Nuclear Power Plant. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission told Action 11 that several new areas of questionable strength have been found with a testing device that uses sound waves. The seriousness of the new findings will not be known until core samples can be taken. The ultrasonic testing was begun after a visual inspection by the NRC turned up 520 air pockets in the concrete. When Action 11 continues, Chuck Taylor will have the weather. Hatfield Jewelers has what people want, like a one-carat diamond cluster sale for only $799. Where else but Hatfield? When Lincoln Mercury has a sale, you know it means a great deal. Announcing your Lincoln Mercury dealer's Super Saver Sale. Special factory incentives of up to $600 on Mercury Marquee and Cougar XR7 and up to $750 on Continental Mark V, Lincoln Continental, and Lincoln Versailles. On top of your dealer's already sensational clearance prices, enable him to offer you values you wouldn't believe until now. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer and catch the cat's super saver sale. When you feel like celebrating. Buy it, George. When you feel like having fun. Lunch. When you're feeling really hungry after all the work is done. Take me to the biggest burger you can find. Then you feel like a burger chef. Thank you, you Can I help you? When you feel like the burger with the bacon or a do-it-yourself salad or your own special touch at our works bar. When you feel like more than a burger on a bun. You guys all have enough to eat? We're the only place that lets you feel like a burger chef. Do you feel full? I feel full. Along with all the rest of us, Kentuckiana tobacco farmers are still suffering from the hot, humid weather. They need some dry weather several days without rain to save their crops. One official in Jennings County, Indiana, says that 40 percent of the crop there has been damaged by waterlogged soil. Similar estimates come from other parts of Kentuckiana. So the question for Chuck Taylor is, will they get the dry weather? Okay, it looks like uh, we are going to see a cold front move through. And of course, the president was very lucky because uh, he missed out on all those showers and thunder showers 
showers around the region. That cold front is just west of here. There are some showers and thunder showers showing up on the action track color radar. It looks like the president once again is going to be lucky. He's uh, going to get out of here before those showers and thunder showers arrive. But as that cold front moves through later on tonight, we are going to get showers and thunder showers here. Then that drier air is going to be moving in as high pressure from the west builds in our direction. And we are definitely going to get a nice day tomorrow. Lots of sunshine lower humidity and it will be cooler. Looking right now at the action track color radar, you can see quite a few showers and thunder showers around the region. Those showers and thunder showers around Owensboro and Evansville will be arriving here later on tonight. We have cloudy skies right now and our temperature is still on the warm side, 82, our humidity 79 percent. The wind right now out of the southwest, but it will be shifting to the northwest as the front moves through. Our wind speed 15 miles an hour, the barometer 29.96 and holding steady. A very warm day. The high was 89, our low temperature 74, no rainfall in the past 24 hours, but look at this, for the month of July, 10.05 pollution, that's another problem tonight, 205 in the very unhealthful category, but as the showers and thunder showers move in and the wind shifts around to northwest, the pollution will be dropping. Our solar index for yesterday, 71. 82 here, south of here at Bowling Green, 93 in our forecast for tonight. Calls for very warm weather with showers and thunder showers developing. An overnight low of 73. Tomorrow the showers will be ending. It will be turning cooler and less humid. A high tomorrow of only 83 degrees, below normal for this time of year. Fair tomorrow night, fair on Thursday. But as we head for the weekend, unfortunately, more showers and thunder showers are possible. Boy, that pollution just skyrocketed. I Earlier know, today it was 69, I believe. Yeah, but it will be dropping, definitely. Okay, good. Thank you, Chuck. Coming up, more advice from the Weekend Gardener on saving storm-damaged trees and the sports report from Dave Conrad. Size and hold the anchovies. Hey, it's a Harry from the Liberty Bank. <laughs> but this is the man that helped Luigi give you the best pizza in town. Banker? Show him your stuff, Harry. Harry's a Liberty Commercial Account Specialist. One reason we're well known for helping businesses. We didn't get that way just because we know our business, but because we know yours. To Harry, we'll go along with you. Every time you hit the road, you run the risk of hitting another car. And if you do, most insurance companies will raise your rates. But not J.C. Penney Insurance. Drive three straight years with us without an accident. Then if you have just one, we won't raise the rates on your policy. That's Pennywise protection. So come in or call, because the first time you hit another car, we won't hit you for more money. Pennywise protection, insurance for the smart driver. Save hundreds of dollars now on a new Clap Oldsmobile. They're closer than you think, just five minutes from downtown Louisville. Clap Oldsmobile, Highway 131 in Clarksville. As Chuck said, as long as there is summer left, there's a chance for more storms and more damage to your trees. Tonight, Fred Wishy continues his special report on how to treat your trees. Trees damaged in summer windstorms can often be saved if you act promptly. And as I showed you yesterday, the proper way to cut back damaged limbs. But remember this, always cut your limbs all the way back, flush with the trunk of the tree. Never leave a stub sticking out like this. That stub will only decay and it'll invite insects and diseases later on. A limb was removed from this sugar maple tree several years ago. And look at the way the bark has sealed over because when I removed the limb, I cut it flush with the trunk. The wound healed itself. Now, what about this question about tree wound dressings? Should you apply them after you've removed the limb of the tree? Should you treat the wound? New information shows that that is no longer necessary. According to Jefferson County's extension agent for horticulture, Mark Timmons, he told me recently, the material that we commonly use to treat tree wounds does not promote healing. But if it'll make you feel better, if you do want it, you can use orange shellac. Tomorrow, safety in repairing storm-damaged trees. I'm Fred Wishy, the Weekend Gardener.
Our reporter, Mark Pfeiffer, told me that he tried to go out and play tennis today, and he lasted three minutes. Three minutes? I don't think it's any wonder that Mr. Moore last no, no, no. night couldn't hold on. It wasn't a tiebreaker in three minutes. No, he it? just said it was too hot. Well, it certainly was last night. Although no official decision has been made, it appears that the Louisville Tennis Classics of the future will undergo some changes. More than likely, the surface will not change. The tournament will still be played on clay, but the date will change perhaps as early as the 1981 Classic. Move the tournament earlier in the year or later in the year to avoid the heat and humidity of the Ohio Valley. In the title match of the 10th Annual Classic last night, there was not one among the thousands who witnessed the excitement who did not feel the pain and the agony experienced by Terry Moore, which ended the match prematurely. His severe leg cramps, which resulted in John Alexander being proclaimed the champion. Both warriors were worn out at the end, and the way it ended certainly surprised no one. Certainly did not surprise John Alexander. No, it's not surprising. It was very humid tonight, and uh, we both got very tired after the first set. Um, so, you know, it's always a possibility. You know. um, I'm not the type of person that gets cramps. I slow down before I get the cramps. <laughs> I, uh, Started getting cramps in the beginning of the third set. I felt them coming on, and uh, you know, they just—it was just inevitable, I guess. You know, I felt it and it kept getting worse, and just you know, couldn't get it out. So you just knew you wouldn't be able to finish. Well, I, you know, it just kept getting worse and, and toward the end of the. Uh, How about the applause the, the fans gave you tonight? It was great. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's great. It's great to be uh, back. You know, and I wanted to come out, but you know, I just, I just couldn't. It kept getting worse every time I, you know, swung or something. So. That's the way it goes, I guess. Some win some, lose some. It indeed was a fabulous finale, and the thousands who witnessed it were most appreciative. All the baseball action in the majors comes tonight, and if you're wondering about the home run derby being waged in baseball by Mike Schmidt of the Phillies and Dave Kingman of the Cubs, pertaining perhaps to the single season home run record, Set back in 1961 by Roger Maris, Schmidt has 36, Kingman 35, but both, both men are several homers behind Roger Maris's pace. At this stage of the 61 season, the Yankee slugger had 40 home runs, so they're four or five behind right now. Okay, thank you, Dave. We will have more from Jim Mitchell live in Bardstown when Action 11 continues. A nuclear nightmare. The man who downed a Shaw. Man's distant past, the Navy's future, war, peace, taxes, pot, inflation, the realm of Hollywood, the kingdom of oil, ballet's top princess. There isn't a subject under the sun or an issue on your mind that you won't find covered in the pages of Time. For Time is a news magazine that does the homework for your head work, the stories behind the news that's happening to you. If you'll try Time now, we'll send you almost half a year at half the single copy price, with this Webster's New Ideal Dictionary as a dividend. The dictionary brings you the world of words, and time brings you a world of news every week. From Time's candid cover stories to its movie, theater, and book reviews, you cover it all. Science, medicine, religion, business, art, politics, showbiz, towering issues, the hard to pin down, the hard to get at. You get it in the lively writing and colorful pages of Just One Magazine. Information you won't find anywhere else. Time. It's the news magazine that invented the news magazine. And for more than half a century, it's been the magazine for people who care about knowing. You'll enjoy reading time, too, every page and every minute of it. For it will keep you in, tune you up, nail things down, and take you everywhere. Time's cover price is $1.25, but you can subscribe now at our basic rate of about 59 cents an issue. That's 25 issues for $14.97, and we pay the postage. Just phone this toll-free number to order time, and to get your 672-page Webster's Dictionary as a dividend. Time is about 59 cents an issue, our basic rate, while the dictionary comes free with your paid subscription. Our operators are standing by. Phone toll-free, 800-621-8200. That's 800-621-8200. Remember, time is half the cover price. The phone call and the dictionary are free. It's been a long day for all the White House press corps, all the local reporters, and of course President Carter. His plane is on the runway at Stanford Field at this moment, ready to take off as soon as the helicopter arrives from Bardstown carrying the president. Now let's go back to Jim Mitchell live in Bardstown for reaction to President Carter's town meeting. 
Here's to the president left just a few minutes ago, so that helicopter will be a few moments getting up to Standiford. I wanted you to meet uh, Gladys Razor. Gladys came all the way up from Bath County. What is that, about 60, 70 miles oh, to see the president? Oh, about 135. Round trip, huh? No. Oh, the whole way. Oh, well, okay. Way. Now, you were waiting out here to see the uh, president. You got to see him walk by. Oh, yeah. And Gladys gave me a little trouble because we had to rope off an area here so we could do our telecast, and she was afraid she couldn't see the president. What happened when he came out? Gladys? Oh, when he came oh, out, well, I was going to shake hands with him if I had to cut the rope. <laughs> <laughs> was that necessary? Oh, no, it no, wasn't what? necessary, and I did. I enjoyed it very much. That's fine. I think he's a wonderful man. Yeah. If we, the people of the United States, would only stand behind him. What uh, What did you think of what he had to say uh, that you were listening to on loudspeakers We did. I think that the uh, program that he has is good, and I think that the people of the United States would stand behind our good president, that we had to have a good country in which to live. Well, that's what he was asking for, and that seemed to be the consensus around here. Is that what the rest of you folks seem to feel about uh, President Carter's speech? Most yeah. folks seem to be pretty much uh, pretty much behind him. Let's uh, come over here just a little bit. I remember talking to you. Oh, you yeah. waited here all that time. What was your name? <laughs> Janet Warner. Where are you from, Janet? From here at Barnstown. How did you like what you saw and heard today? Well, I really enjoy being here, and it's just exciting to see the president come to, you know, such a small town as Barnstown. I think we're all honored to have him here. If he goes to other town meetings around the country, are you going to feel slighted, or will this still be a pretty big day for your city? This is the biggest day for us, I think. <laughs> How old are you? Can I ask you? 22. 22. So did, uh, from your age point of view, do you think what he said made sense today? Yes, I do. Support his energy program pretty much? Yes, I do. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you to all of you for standing around here and being patient and letting us crowd you out of the way. We hope you all got a chance to shake hands with the president. Uh, it has been quite an eventful day. I think the two ladies you just heard summed up the feelings pretty well. The people in Bardstown were truly honored. They didn't ask the president any easy questions. They had tough questions for him, but they listened to his answers, and they were pleased that he took the time to come all the way here from Washington and to give them to them. That's it from Bardstown for now. Uh, of course, we'll have later reports on what happened here at 11 o'clock. And, Kirsty, back to you. Jim, I have one question, if you yes, can hear me. Okay. How hot is it out there? Uh, it is really hot. Oh. It is so hot. <laughs> and high humidity, too, but uh, we had a pleasant time anyway. You have stood up well in that jacket, I must say. Thanks for being with us. CBS News is next. We'll be back at 11 o'clock with all the day's news. Good night. This is the CBS Evening News with Roger Mudd.